Hey everyone, Steve here from Big Head Tech and AMD. We got to talk. You done messed up AAMD. Hopefully you guys get the reference. The RX 5500 XT has been a very frustrating release. I have three big issues with it, and I talked about that in the previous video, which I'll put in the description if you haven't seen that yet. And the frustrations are so bad that I recommend the 1650 Super as a really good option. In fact, before I would recommend this card in many cases, just due to how annoyed I am with AMD. Now, to be honest, don't buy that card. Not because I'm frustrated, but because what I had to do to verify what nobody knew except for one German tech blogger or reviewer found out and today after many hours of troubleshooting I have indeed re-ran the tests to figure out what's going on and let's actually talk about that so this card the 5500 XT is, is an 8x card apparently that's not the first time we've seen that and you would say well that's not the end of the world you know it's going to run 16x bandwidth blah 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 no it doesn't it is hardwired to only use eight PCI Express lanes. So, PCI Express Gen 3, which was the board we tested on, is equivalent to PCI Express Gen 2 X16 when it comes to bandwidth. And now that we have GDDR6 memory exceeding 14,000 effective megahertz, or 14 gigabits per second, mine's at almost 15, we could potentially be in a bottleneck. So my test results are going right now. But before we get to that, we got to talk a little more. So the new Radeon drivers, I think they're called 2020. I tore down my test, my personal system, because it's the only X570, which is PCI Express Gen 4. And PCI Express Gen 4 X8 is going to be equivalent to PCI Express Gen 3 X16, so there shouldn't be a bottleneck. So I tore down my system, got it built up, ready to go, and I cannot install the drivers. And the reason why I can't install the drivers is because my Windows files, which is documents, downloads, etc., is mapped to my own RAID server. It literally says, because the Windows files, and it gives in parentheses, it gives an example, documents, downloads, desktop, are mapped to a network drive, we cannot install this software. Okay. I shut off the server. Still can't do it. So not only did I have to tear down my system, and rebuild the test bench to an acceptable level that the variances should be nil. I then had to get another hard drive, SSD, which I don't have another NVMe SSD handy, I only have the ones that are in active systems. So I had to get a SATA SSD, not that that really is gonna make a difference because the games are run off an external SSD. And I had to install Windows and I'm still on 1803, so I had to update to 1903 because that's when I run all my test on. And it, it took some time. It took me over two hours to get everything configured, get Forza, get all the Windows updates, get everything down in the way I want it, and rerun the test. So I'm very frustrated. Frustrated so much that if these results come back, that you need a $150 motherboard. And the reason why I say that is because there's not a lot of good X570 boards under that price. You really give up VRM quality and the ability to cool the VRM. There's no reason to buy this car, none whatsoever. And again, it comes to the whole idea of value. It's not priced right. The 8 gigs too expensive. It's the same price and performance as an RX 590. And now we're potentially looking at a bottleneck on like 95% of the motherboards out there, including like your high end 9900 case are not going to be able to run this car's full potential. That being said, probably won't run that, but you know, basically an i3, right? i3 on the if you'd run with that. You could be giving up some performance. And if that's the case, I'm gonna be quite frustrated. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks. Well, test system first, methodology, all that fun stuff. Then results, and hopefully my outro is not too long. So just a really quick refresher. Here are the essential specs. 14 extreme processors, 1845 megahertz core, although that was auto overclocked. Four gigs of GDDR6 memory at 14,000 gigabits per second, 128 bit bus, uh, 224 gigabits per second bandwidth, 130 watt TDP, eight pin power connector, 
Um, we're not really talking about the 1650 Super, but here are the specs very similar as well. Test bench for the um, PCI Express Gen 4 is a little bit different. Um, so the only main difference is, is the cooler. That just, it really didn't make much of a difference. It was a uh, fractal design S360. Uh, motherboard is the X570 uh, Tai Chi by ASRock. Uh, 850 watt power supply, uh, Lee and Lee PC11 um, case, and then the same SSD. So it just didn't make sense to make those changes. None of those are really gonna produce any kind of meaningful difference results there. Uh, testing methodology is still the same. Uh, during games, I have four Chrome tabs open, a few programs open, you guys can see here. Um, assumptions, motion blurs would be off when enabled. Um, two monitors at all times, 1440 and 1080p are the backgrounds. Uh, only using uh, auto overclocking features, XMP was enabled, or DOCP in this case. Uh, normalized fans on both CPU and GPU. <clears throat> now, uh, the overclocking that we're uh, dealing with here. Uh, so we auto undervolt, auto overclock both memory and core. That gave us 11, um, uh, 1.118, 1.119 volts, uh, 1928 megahertz core, and we got up to 14,880 megahertz on the memory. So pretty much the same system before. And we're gonna jump right into superposition now. In this test, we saw small gains, about 150 points at uh, 1440p, and right around about the same at 1080p. So th this was definitely a little bit more than margin of error. I saw upwards of 10% difference in performance. So this was much smaller than that, probably like 2%. And these are synthetic. So I really kind of expect to see a pretty big difference here, but let's take a look at Final Fantasy XIV. Um, we actually jumped a fair bit of 1080p in this case, but 1440p a little bit less, so about uh, a little over 200, 250 of 1440, and we actually jumped up about uh, 650 points of 1080p. This is kind of what I would have expected. Synthetics generally are gonna draw out the biggest differences. So. That's, that right there is a little bit of a difference. So when we talk about 700 points at 1440 or 1080p, that's you know gonna be right around that 5% mark, which is a little little uh, difference there. Uh, looking at 1080p, 250 points at just under 10,000, uh, that's actually about half of that. So taking a look at 3D mark, time spy, uh, pretty much dead even here. So, I mean, different tests are going to react a little differently depending on how stacked they are on VRAM and things like that but this was pretty much repeatable at dead time. Now the only thing that really matters is video games. So so far we saw a little difference, a bigger difference and then no difference. So taking a look at F1 2018 and I really hope this is not going to repeat itself. Uh, 3 FPS both at 1440 and 1080p repeatable. Uh, so 1440, that's actually a pretty big difference. It's about 6%. Uh, and at 1080p, it's going to be a little less, around 4%. But that's still something that, unfortunately, now we have a legit bottleneck. And it's a PCI Express Gen 3. But that's one of five games. Hitman 2, oh, yeah, we're doing it again. Um, about 5 FPS, so we're actually almost 10% here. And at 1440p, we're a smidgen over 10%. So we went from 59.5 to 64.5, and we went from 42.5 to about 46.5. I really didn't want to see that kind of result. And looking at synthetics, I, I didn't expect it, but there's more. Forza Horizon 4. Not a huge difference here, uh, looking about 4 FPS and around 3 FPS. 5%, I mean, it's not as big as the previous test, but it's still noticeably better. And that is definitely a little bit concerning because again, we're dealing with a bottleneck in a situation where, you know, I don't do perfect world testing, right? I'm not running on a night, well, I can't run 9900K, but it's not like I'm running on like a 3900X. I could, but, but I didn't. So there was already some, you know, things in my testing that aren't perfect. But I do that for a reason. And to see bottlenecks happen, 
really tells you that this is actually the best case scenario, not the worst case. But regardless, Ghost Recon Wildlands. Ooh. Ooh, that, that one that one's actually pretty big. Um, so we jumped up about seven and a half FPS. So we jumped up about 12% at 1080p and moving over to 1440p, not as drastic, uh, only about three FPS. And we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up, but that's actually kind of interesting at 1080p seeing um, a larger difference. Uh, lastly, Division 2, and uh, this one at 1080p was pretty big. So 1440 barely moved. Uh, about 4 FPS and at 1080p it moved quite a bit. I moved about 8 FPS, so it's also over 10%. Uh, and then we have, uh, let's take a look at the actual differences that we saw. So when we look at synthetics, we saw a 2% increase. Nothing big, almost margin of error, but large enough not to be. Gaming though, we saw a big difference at 1080p, upwards of 8 to 9%. 1440p was closer to like six or seven percent, but we were averaging right around that eight percent gain. So that's strike number four. That at this time, I can honestly say, unless AMD has a way of fixing the bandwidth issue, which I believe this is a hardware design. I could be wrong, but I believe it's a hardware design. So that X8 issue is not going to be fixed. But they have to fix a lot with this card to make it recommended. At this point, I I can't. I am not going to recommend this card going forward. Uh, it's not that it's bad. It's I think AMD made way too many mistakes. Pricing, um, an 8 gig version that shouldn't exist, basically released a card where one of her other cards competes with it directly to price and performance. And now you're leaving about eight to ten percent of performance on the table, unless you're going to overspend on a motherboard. Because the reason why I say that is, you shouldn't be buying a hundred fifty dollar motherboard with a hundred and seventy dollar GP. That makes no sense. Now, would I've changed my mind if B five fifty boards were out, cost less than a hundred dollars, and I PCI Express Gen four? Honestly, at that point, I wouldn't, because then I can understand AMD's philosophy. <clears throat> Ryzen at every price point up until probably 9900KS versus 3900X is either straight up winning in every category including gaming and or tied for my testing, not necessarily winning but tied, or very competitive like the i3-9100F versus like the 3200G, the, the i3 is going to win in raw performance. Not by a huge margin but still going to win. But I could make an argument saying, well, you can get a board on AMD that's $80. It's going to have PCI Express Gen 4. Um, pair it with the right Ryzen CPU, like a 3600, even, well, it have to be a 3000 series um, CPU. But I, I just, I can't. I, I really can't. And, and that's actually other things. You need a 3000 series G, uh, CPU. You shouldn't buy a $200 CPU and a $170 GPU. It's not balanced. So... AMD would also have to come out with cheaper Ryzen 3000 chips that support Gen 4. So like the APUs, 3200G, uh, 3400G, 3000G, those aren't going to work with, with that with when it comes to PCI Express. So I, I'm very disappointed in AMD. I really am. I'm not going to throw my AMD system away. I'm not going to get rid of my 5700 XT. But the reality of it is, is right now NVIDIA for $170 has a better card. It works out of the box, it's easy to tune, it's cool, it's quiet, you do give up a little bit of performance, but it makes a lot more sense than this car. So AMD, you gotta fix this. There's a lot you have to do. The X8 doesn't have to be fixed for me to change my mind, but you still have to decrease the cost of this car, get rid of the 8 gig, Come out with the 5600 XT that competes with the 1660 Super at that price point. If you do those three, then the 8X isn't going to matter because then it's going to be 130 bucks. It's going to be cheaper than this, replacing the RX 570, and then it's not really a big deal. And then if you can come out with cheaper boards with PCI Express Gen 4 that this can pair with, and then hopefully CPUs in the $130 range like the Ryzen 5 3500, which still doesn't exist in the United States then we can piece everything together and say there's a good place for this 
there's a really good place for it and still other good places this could end up. So that's that, AMD. You done messed up AAMD. That's all I gotta say. You done messed up. Fix it. Because if you don't, people like me and other reviewers are gonna just continue to talk about it and we know you're better than that. So if you wanna buy this graphics card or my test system, that link is in the description below. Do me a favor, share this video if you find it informative. Like the video if you like it, dislike it, dislike it. Leave a comment, get subscribed. Oh, if you buy anything, I do get a kickback from Amazon, just so you know. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech. Happy holidays if you celebrate Christmas, Kwanzaa, etc. I think we're already past uh, Hanukkah, but you know, if you celebrate that, hopefully you had a good time. And I'll see y'all later on down the road.